In this video, we are going to go through a total least squares example in MATLAB in which we will try to find correlations between five variables. We are good, so we will first see how the data are generated so that we know the true model and then we'll carry out total least squares and check that we indeed get the true model. Everything is prepared in order for it to work perfectly as the theory predicts real life may be different. So let us first discuss how to generate data. We will generate five variables in which two of them, some y things, are function of three x1, x2, x3 variables. So total is squares. We'll try to find these correlations, these internal relationships in this five component vector. If each sample of the five variables is arranged in a row, then this will be the basic equation that generates our model. Parameters theta must be 3 times 2, so that matrix product can be carried out. And if we have many samples, then we get these dimensions. Of course, if we transpose everything, then we would get the expression for data being in column form. It's just the same, you know, you choose. So let us generate this data. First, by generating the x variables, I will have 90,000 samples. Wow, a lot of three x variables. Rand n produces variables with standard deviation equal to 1. And then I multiply by this diagonal matrix at the right hand side in order to generate three variables so that 25 is the standard deviation of x1, 1.7 is that of x2 and 18 is that of x3. This is a bit you know. We are not standardizing or scaling the data at this step. Theta, the true model, will be this 3 times 2 matrix, well, 6 numbers. So this clean data generation is accomplished in this line of code. Now, if we are dealing with total least squares, we are assuming that all of the five elements of our data, these ones, are corrupted by some noise. So these will be the standard deviations of each of the five components of my data. And for convenience, I will arrange them in a diagonal matrices. So with this code, I contaminate the clean samples of X with this random noise the same size as x clean, but multiplying by some diagonal matrices in order to convert the unit standard deviation noise to standard deviations as expressed here. And likewise, I generate standardized normal distribution for y, and then I multiply by this matrix on the right in order for each of the columns to have the required standard deviation. So we have x and y, and that will be the only information to my data analysis identification code. In fact, in total least squares, in many cases, I just have them, you know, juxtaposed, five variables, and total least squares is agnostic to what is input and what is output. We'll see it below. First, we will check that plain ordinary list squares with the pseudo inverse formula estimating theta by least squares in here, we will see that this results in a biased estimate. Indeed, the true model had these coefficients, and if I evaluate the pseudo-inverse-based formula, I get this. Is this biased? Well, it seems so. I mean, I have 90,000 samples. 90,000 samples seems, you know, quite a lot. If I don't get the through theta with 90,000 samples, I don't think I will get it with more of them. Indeed, if I repeat and repeat, you can see that the numbers are always around the same values and they all lie on a given side above or below the true parameter. So these numbers are not a matter of bad luck. For instance, in this, if this were a matter of bad luck, of variance, then if I repeat, Maybe I would get 5.2, but no. Consistently, I get and get 
repeatedly 4.63 something, so the result is biased. It's average if we repeat and repeat this. It's not the clean stuff. Of course, we know that from theoretical considerations, in the sense that if I have a linear model, then the noise in X makes data expand in the horizontal direction. So the shape is a sort of biased towards having a rectangle-like shape. Of course, we are in higher dimensions, but the intuition is the same. And at least the squares obtain sort of the diagonal of this rectangle, which is biased. It doesn't have the same slope as this half line, which is the true model. Details are not in the scope of this video for brevity. So if we cannot obtain a good model with these least squares, pseudo inverse, let's go with total least squares and see that we can indeed recover this theta clean under an important assumption, under the assumption that we do know the standard deviations. So we can indeed build these matrices with the standard deviations associated to the additive measurement noise that corrupts the clean data. Under that assumption, we will get an unbiased estimate, but that assumption may be not so realistic in some application cases. But OK, in this video, we are not discussing real life. We are just discussing how the data should be generated and processed in order for the theory to yield correct results. Real life does not fit 100% the theorem conditions. Well, so each sample of data is in a row. So we will get these dimensions of X and Y. And the key assumption is that we know those standard deviations. So we can form this data with, importantly, scaled variables so that all of the five variables in this data matrix, 90,000 samples times five variables, so that all of them have a measurement noise of one unit after the data has been suitably scaled. How? By dividing by the measurement noise standard deviation. Indeed, if I have something corrupted by a measurement noise with standard deviation two, then if I divide that thing by two, I will get and scaled variable whose noise will be of unit standard deviation. So if I divide by the noise standard deviation, then I get this data scaled data normalized to unit measurement noise in order for the code below to report unbiased models. So assuming that we do know this and indeed that the data are generated by a linear model plus this noise, then we need to subtract the average to make them zero mean. In this code, I actually generated X and Y from zero mean random data set. So for sure, the mean is zero and the sample mean will be very close to it. But anyway, subtracting the mean and working in incremental coordinates with respect to the mean, it's a must in order for linear models to have the meaning we engineers wish to give them. So I put this code. Once I have the data normalized to zero mean and unit measurement noise variance, then total least squares and principal component analysis is just another name for singular value decomposition. I am dividing by the square root of n minus one because I lost one statistical degree of freedom when subtracting the mean. And as discussed elsewhere, dividing by this square root, then matrix S will have units of standard deviation of, of the principal components of this scaled data. So even if this division is just multiplying the data by a constant, so the resulting model will be the same. So from an engineering point of view, this division is sort of optional. In order to statistically understand the meaning of S, it's advised to divide by this square root. So we do it. It's fast. It took just 10 milliseconds. So principal component analysis finds that I have two components of sample variance, roughly one. OK, as we know that our data is scaled to unit noise variance, then OK, these two things means that, OK, this is just a clean model zero. 
corrupted with unit noise. So I found the model and then the remaining three principal components are actually the sources of the variation of this. So our principal component analysis successfully finds that there are three sources of variability, of course, the three X stuff I used when generating the data and two equations that roughly should be zero, but they have standard deviation one because of the unit noise corrupting all the data. So good, we found what theory expects, of course, because the data is prepared to show off how good the theory is. In a realistic situation, maybe I will not find two ones like this, but I do here. And hence, if I look at the V matrix, which is five for five, the linear transformation, the changes variables, if each sample were a column, then it would be U, but in this case it's V. So the last two columns of V associated to these pure noise components, I assume that the true model will be the last columns of V times the data being zero. Well, in order for the dimensions to hold, the underlying assumption is that this equation holds for the clean stuff. And if I see a unit variance residual, it's because of the unit noise. I am corrupting everything. So good, we found the model and this would be the end of the total least squares code. However, as we are scaling the variables for convenience, we will express the model in original coordinates. How? Well, if here I have the real data times some standard deviation, I call it D minus one, then if I just consider D minus one to be part of the model, then I will have the model in non-scale coordinates. So undoing a diagonal scaling is kind of trivial operation. Then we'll do that first in order to have the model in original coordinates. And then as we are gotten, we know that the true model had this form, then we will try to solve for Y, the two first variables associated to this, in order to check if my estimate of theta is the correct one. So how do we do that? At the end, once I undo the scaling, I will have something like this. And then this model will have some matrices that multiply Y and some other matrix that multiplies X, the unscaled version of these two rows and the unscaled version of these three last rows. Okay, remember this is not M1, it's sort of M1 with scaling that I will cancel out in a minute. Okay, so I have this kind of model. And then if I move that to the other side, changing sign, I get this. And if I multiply by the inverse of M1, I will get this final result solving for Y. So that this thing is my estimate of theta. So that if it is unbiased, it should be very close to the true clean theta. So let's do this. I will first select the two first rows associated to Y and the three ones associated to X. And with this change of variable, I will undo the scaling on X. S to the X was a diagonal matrix with the standard deviations, same for Y. And then this expression is this one with the sign change. So that will be the total least squares estimate of my theta. Of course, this expression is equivalent to this one, just with, you know, scaling and manipulations of the equation. So this and this are actually saying the same from a formal point of view. As I said, total least squares are input output agnostic. And so deciding which variables I solve for is application dependent. Good. Anyway, we did this, we obtained an estimate. And if I compare with the true one, then good. It seems that it's correct up to the third or fourth significant digit. So it works as expected. And of course, if I repeat, then sometimes I get them above the mean, some other times below the mean. If I had infinite data, I would get the theta clean. So this is unbiased. 
as a last of observation, I have the same procedure with data ranged in columns. So if my experiment had data in this size, then operations would be exactly the same, but you know, transposing and changing the order of matrix multiplications. So if I was multiplying by a matrix at the right hand side previously, if the data are arranged the other way around, then I must multiply matrices by the left. So basically I leave it to you. This will do the scaling. The average will be the sum over the second dimensions, the sum of 90,000 stuff. And the same SVD will give exactly the same values. And now the matrix to look for the model is U and the last two columns of U. I do this transpose now because the data is in column form. So it's this model times the column of the five data that must be approximately equal to zero. So I'm doing the scaling and with suitable manipulations, I get an estimate of my true theta that of course is, you know, the transpose of, of the one I got, but it's just the same. The details are trivial and I leave them for you. So let us conclude by summarizing what we have done. In this video, we are illustrating a five variable totalist squares example. We did generate the data by multiplying some random x by a known parameters and contaminating all five data elements with noise of a known standard deviation. Ordinary list squares was biased, but total list squares. The key assumption is that I know this measurement noise variances. So once I subtract the mean and I do SVD, the last two columns of V or U, depending on rows or columns, how they are arranged. These last two columns provide me the model in scaled variables. And of course, I'm doing the scaling and solving for Y because I am God and I knew that the true data is generated like this. This knowledge, of course, may be not available in actual applications, but in this case, as I know that, I can check whether this estimated theta is good or not. And indeed, everything is prepared for the total least squares estimate to be unbiased. And it yields me something very, very similar to the true parameter because I have a lot of data and they are generated as the theory likes them to be. In a forthcoming video, we'll analyze what happens when my scalings are wrong. But I tell you, the model will be biased. So things in real life are riskier than in these very well-prepared academical examples. Good, we finish with this. Thanks for your attention.